Dear friends and today we will explore these huge wind turbines that look the same everywhere, but there is no shortage of ideas of how else they could look, so why haven't we seen any of these around yet, and do they have a chance? Overall, things are looking pretty good for wind power. In 2022, wind turbines made up just over 7% of global electricity production, with the bulk coming from the really big equipment. The first documented windmill powered machine was a musical organ that was credited to Greek inventor Hero of Alexandria, likely around 100 AD. Over the following centuries, farmers in Persia and China refined wind power technology to boost food production. Since then there have been many ideas about how to harness the wind. While the older models were about 30 meters tall, modern versions started at about 50 meters. Nowadays 250 plus meter turbines are becoming standard, powering tens of thousands of homes. The small wind turbine is for yourself. If you have a windy location, you can produce power for yourself, electricity for yourself. This might be an enterprise. It might be a farmer. This might also be a private home. A small wind turbine has a rotor sweep of an area less than 200 square meters. Beyond that, they can be almost anything. But generally, there are two groups, horizontal and vertical. Horizontal versus vertical. In the first case, the rotor shaft is horizontal and parallel with the direction of the wind. Horizontal wind turbines need to be actively oriented toward the wind, which requires a significant effort. Vertical axis wind turbines flip that. With the rotating shaft perpendicular to the wind, they can capture wind from all directions of the compass at all times. Horizontal turbines are generally more efficient than vertical ones of the same size because horizontal turbines have been aerodynamically optimized to the max. So horizontal turbines have won the sprint to build large-scale wind parks by being more efficient and offering a better return on investment. That's why they are also the main players in the small wind turbine business. But vertical turbines might be about to have their own moment in the sun. I mean wind, they have some real advantages. Mostly vertical turbines are available in such a small scale and also they are not as noisy. Vertical wind turbines are also easier to maintain with key components, like the generator at ground level, and not at the top of a very very tall tower. And vertical turbines easily win in terms of creativity. When wind hits the vertical turbines, it swirls around the structures and speeds up. This makes the turbines close by turn faster, generating more energy, and can make a wind farm 60% more efficient compared to regular arrays. Inspired by NASA's Tumbleweed Rover, which can travel straight despite winds blowing from all directions, the wind ball might eventually generate power anywhere with chaotic wind patterns. But the technology is still in its infancy. The same goes for those vibrator-like turbines. They are called bladeless wind turbines for obvious reasons. When wind hits the structure, it creates wind vortexes around it that then make the turbine vibrate. Another fascinating idea for harvesting wind from all directions are kite turbines. We have an entire video on that you can check out. Right now, small-scale wind power is still a blip on the global scale. In 2020 it accounted for just 1.8 gigawatts, or 0.2% of installed wind capacity worldwide. Some analysts have projected the sector to grow at some 9% a year to reach a value of $2.54 billion by 2030. With renewable energy, a key tool in cutting CO2 emissions, small-scale wind power might get a foothold in many niche areas, such as remote, low-infrastructure regions, where there's no public power grid. In Europe you have the dark winter, and during the dark winter low solar radiation. But we have lots of wind, or this might be also a rainy season, monsoon season with lots of clouds, not that much solar radiation. But you have wind, and I think is really the future of small wind turbines. Then there are all the places that don't have enough space for big turbines, such as in cities, on roofs, on balconies, or on urban infrastructure, like transmission masts or streetlights, to complement the larger ones. So besides having a lot of large turbines, wind turbines and solar panels, and water turbines and so on, we will probably need in the future to have everything we can get, and this is very interesting in this field. In the city and in rural areas, of course, adding more wind power means we also need to strengthen the grid. Hope you will like the video. Also subscribe the channel.